1920, British Muslims had been trying to establish a mosque in the capital of the British Empire. Funds had been raised with the help of Muslim rulers and emperors around the world, but their endeavours had not seen fruition. Meanwhile, a group of poor women from the unknown village of Qadian in the British Indian Punjab managed to raise enough funds by whatever little savings or jewellery they owned to purchase the land on which the first mosque of the capital of the British Empire would soon be built upon. In Islamic faith, Women are equal to men in that they are capable of working alongside them in virtuous deeds. Hence, when their Imam, the second caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, called them towards this noble sacrifice, they proved that they are not second-class citizens, nor are they inferior to men in acts of righteousness. In fact, Ahmadi Muslim women proved that they are a mighty force that can work wonders. Hence, in 1922, the second caliph, may Allah be pleased with him, established a women-only auxiliary organization within the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, which he named Lajna Imaila, because they proved that they are not the servants of any worldly power, rather they are the servants of Allah in the truest sense. <laughs> The dawn of Lajna Imaila happened at a time when women in the Muslim world were seen as non-entity. There was a wave that advocated Muslim women's education, but the approaches towards this cause were poles apart. It was either about traditional reform or complete modernism. None seemed to be working well as the so-called modernist Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan too remained conservative about women being educated. He too saw women as a class that should remain within the four walls of their houses, even if some form of education was to reach them. Most literature produced for Muslim women was inspired by Ashraf Ali Danvi's Bahishti Zero and hence only aimed at producing marriageable girls who could be good wives through solely being a source of pleasure to their husbands. The other extreme was Sayyid Mumtaz Ali's Dazib e Niswa, which was inclined more towards complete liberation even at the cost of Islamic barda. So liberal were his ideals that even Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan saw it as over-ambitious. All this went on in the latter part of the 19th and early decades of the 20th centuries. Suffragette movement was in full swing in Europe, which goes to prove that it was an age of women's awakening. Such was the global social theatre when Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed laid the foundation of an auxiliary organisation for Ahmadi Muslim women and named it Lajna Imaila, the Servant Maids of Allah. Founded in the humble settings of Qadian, Lajna Imaila set his prospectus for educating women whilst upholding their Islamic values. Chastity and modesty remained at the heart of this organisation, but the aims were set at unlocking the immense potential that lies within the design of womanhood. An Ahmadi woman, under Lajna Imaila, was expected to progress in all worldly affairs without compromising her barda. She could go on to be a good wife, an educated mother, a qualified professional, a compassionate social worker, and yet protect her household from the winds of immorality and materialism, which happened to be on the rise in that age and is at an all-time high today. Lejna Imaila became an exceptional women's organisation where the balance of rights and duties shone as the most precious gem in its crown. A magazine by the name of Ahmadi Khatun was launched for Lejna Imaila which later turned into Tadibun Nisa before it took the form of Misba. Its objective being to encourage women to become literate and progress as an educated class of the society, yet being practising Muslims. A hundred years on, the legacy of Lajna Imaila has grown from strength to strength and its centennial celebrations mean a century of educated, successful, progressive and pious women who have upheld their faith all along but never lagged behind in any field. <laughs>